<laughs> That's the new gym, but it was the old gym. Yeah. This is where we had our Crip meetings at. This is where the Venice Shoreline Crips first got started at. Right here in these bleachers when we named the set. For sure. What year? 1972. Two. Broke his hell, man. A lot of, you know, lifting weights and I was on sport. They started calling me Big Miz. Original stutter box, East Side Five, who's Pablo Bishop, Miss City Gangster Bloods. This is the beginning. Mm. A lot of people don't know you guys predate a lot of the gangs. Uh, in South Central. The, sit at the war zone in South yeah. Central. Yeah. yeah. Niggas don't know you guys in 1972. That yeah. blow, that exactly. Blow, blow a lot of people's minds. Yeah, that's right. Y'all should have been put that out there. We've been wanting to. <laughs> Waiting for you guys yeah. to put it out there. You wanted one of y'all to say it. <laughs> All right, introduce yourself. My name is Cisco, and I'm from the Venice Shoreline Crips. I'm my name is Bird. I'm OG Venice Shoreline Crips. My name is Onion Monkey. I'm original from 1969, when it was like sets, but I came out of the original show line when, it, when, when, we, when everything starts branching out. Cisco, where are you, uh, where's your family originated from? Originated from Shreveport, Louisiana. What, what year did they come to California and why? Oh, my family came out here, wow, like in the, in the 40s. My family was here, I wasn't even born. My first fam my family first came to California. Yeah, it's origin like this. When you turn 18, you go west. You know, you go find a career for yourself. So my uncles and my aunts, them, uh, my mama sisters and brothers, they all came to California and my mama sisters, them, they formed the sewing center. So they made clothes, you know, suits, clothes, the average clothes, everything that you want, you name, that you seen in the stores. And they sold them to the stores downtown LA. So, you know, and then, um, my uncles and them, they all worked at Lockheed, Hughes Aircraft, and some of the other ones. And they was out here, a lot of their kids grew up out here, but all the ones when we turned 18, we came to California. You know what I'm saying? And and that's just the way it was back then in those days. And where did your family originally, originally land at when they came to California? What area? They was, actually they was in the projects from, from, from the Nickerson, from the Nickerson Gardens, the Jordan Downs area, and the Peblos. They was all in that area, uh, and on, on the east side of Los Angeles. Remember back then in those days, the blacks couldn't come this far west. Well, no far west, period. It wasn't no blacks on this side of the town at that particular time, period. Well, it was, except unless you Venice. had money. When you had money and things, and they, except for Venice. Venice always been here. You know, Venice was an area uh, as either you lived in Venice or you lived in Watts. And Venice is an area where people don't know where blacks always been since 1903. Three or five, one of those dates and things of that nature. Blacks always been here and it was Canal area. Right. Explain to the right. audience why blacks were here so early. Back then in those days, they had the project from what I'm told. The history from what I'm told by the older cats, the Venice had the low income housing areas that they built for them to come and live in uh, in order to work at huge aircraft, Lockheed and all those type of places, you know, uh, McDonnell Douglas and all those type of places. So this was an area that they call a little slums area after Abbot Kennedy found this area. Think so. Going back to Cali, going back to Cali, Cali, Cali. I'm going back to Cali, Cali. 
maybe Venice. <laughs> going back to Cali, boy. Going back to Cali, Cali, Cali. I'm going back to Cali, <laughs> maybe <laughs> LA. <laughs> You know, he found that he originally had went to Venice, Italy, and came and, as you know, a little bit of history about that, he came and found this spot. He liked the California so much, so he named this spot kind of like Venice because of the canals right. when he come from Venice, Italy. So he named this place Venice. Venice developer Abbot Kinney had a dream back in 1900. He was going to recreate the romantic Italian city of Venice on the California coast complete with canals and singing gondoliers. Five years and 16 canal miles later, the job was done. Two dozen gondoliers were bought in. Wine flowed, Italian songs filled the air, and Kenny's dream became a reality. Who did he use to build this? Uh, it was another black man that was with him. He had came from Santa Monica, and uh, he had a big home up, up over there. And then this black man was his right hand man. And so after he had uh, passed away, whatever the case may be concerning that, this guy took over. You know, he, and then, like I said, all the rest of the blacks was marinated here and they started building up and paving the streets and things of that nature in the area, building up the, 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 the housing, the low income housing unit all around. And then a lot of blacks started buying homes here back in those days, you know. His friendship with Tabor was deep and enduring, outside of his time in many ways, especially when you consider that when Tabor arrived in 1910, Venice was highly segregated. Blacks could ride only in gondolas that were painted black, and they were not allowed to live on the canals. As a result, many new arrivals settled down just outside of Venice, in what became the historic African-American community of Oakwood. Tabor moved into a cottage on Westminster. When in LA, you know, the blacks couldn't come across uh, what Main Street or, 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 or nowhere far west on this side, but didn't nobody know. People was out this way in Venice all this time. So people don't know that Venice is an original black enclave exactly. in Los Angeles. It actually predates a lot of the black neighborhoods in quote unquote South Central. E exactly. You know, Venice oh. at that particular time, this was called Ghost Town because they didn't have street lights here. You know, so when I came here and moved Dodge here, then, you know, like 1969, when I moved out here and things of that nature started going to Venice High, you know, it was uh, most of the older cats older than me, you know, they was Venice boys, you know, and it was Ghost Town, you know what I mean? And then when we first started, before we turned Shoreline, we was swapping the names. We playing the Venice Ghost Town Crips and this, that, and the other at that particular time and all that. But we wouldn't sell in with that particular name. You know, we wanted our own name. So in need bleaches right here, all the original homies, along with uh, some that is not here that rest in peace, you know, and things of that nature, you know, we come up with, and some that then moved away, we come up with the name because we down by the waters, you know, uh, we, we on the shorelines and this, that, and the other, you know, that's, 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 what about Venice Shorelines? You know what I'm saying? The Venice Shoreline Crips. We always knew we wanted to be Crips. Raymond Washington is akin to the ham bones. So when he was coming out here back in those Come days here, and things of that nature, you know, he was around at that particular time. He came out here in those early days in the 70s too. I remember when he came and he came to a party we had on Peyton Place. Him and uh, uh, No Talk. No Talk, that's Philip McCain's brother. Mm -hmm. They was from uh, 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 111, I think. Underground. You know? Yeah. yeah. They, no, they from 111. Philip McCain was involved with the West Side Crips, a gang that had spread it in the Inglewood. His family sent him from his northeast Inglewood neighborhood to live with his relatives in Venice. According to Philip, he went to Venice to try to slow down, but ended up getting in more trouble with the Venice shorelines jumping on people, 
breaking into houses, selling drugs, and then eventually he had to go back to his turf in Inglewood. Anyway, they told us, hey, wait, they didn't know that many blacks was out here like that. But you know, like I said, he had people out here. And he came up on his, uh, uh, to a party and this, that, and the other. He's like, damn, you didn't. But he act, came in acting like he was going to, you know, try to bully the cats when going for that out here. I mean, I go back to LA and bring all kind of cats out here and turn y'all out. And we told him, what make you think you're going to leave here? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> True story. We told him, what make you think you're going to leave here, homeboy? And then, that's, and then, and then all of that blew by. We got to talking and tripping and chilling. Man, I like y'all. I like y'all. Man, I like y'all. You know, and all that type of stuff. But then at that particular time, you know, he had his boys in L.A. And this, that, and the other that, you know, that he he, he was running things with. And uh, cats was following him. And he wanted us to like, oh, man, y'all, no, nah, we do our own thing, homie. We do our own thing like we do today. You know, Venice, just like all other cars and people got cars, they in cars. Venice is not in no car. We west side, of course, but we in our own car, Venice. You know what I'm saying? We set apart from all the rest of the cars. What year did, did Cisco land in Venice? 1969. And when you landed in Venice in 1969, what was going on in Venice at that time as far as gangs and culture and activities? Well, it wasn't so much as, you know, Venice was had their own structure back then as, as Venice boys, you know, by and, and we would go to the P.O.P. that was right there at the, uh, Venice Pier. That was, a, we call it a Venice Pier. The, the P.O.P., the P. right, uh, on the, off the shoreline, you know. All the homies used to go up there and we used to go to Santa Monica, Culver City, this, that, and there with the older cats. We followed them. They were just Venice, you know what I'm saying, and Ghost Town. You know, the Ghost Town boys, you know, that's what people used to call them. They down there in Ghost Town, there wasn't no street lights back in those days, you know. I missed the part when it wasn't, I seen some of the parts when, when street light was just getting built on the streets and things of that nature, but I missed the bigger that, but, but they, they'll know a whole lot more about that than me. I'm on your monkey. I got a couple of AKA's uh, names. They named me one. Hickey! Do Hickey because I was, uh, I, well, I was small, I was a little skinny dude. I'm from the country, I'm from the south. I came out here a little skinny dude. So they, uh, the city boy was running me home and my brother said, you get on them weights until you lift them over your head. So I started getting big. And that's why they called me Doohickey. And that's when I started knocking people out, you know, because I had knots on their head, you know, because I was, I was a little skinny boy running me home. I was, you know, scared, crying. My brother, I'm tired of you crying. Get on the floor in the morning and, get, and work out and do push-ups till you get some size so you can start fighting back. And that's what happened. I was a little skinny dude. So that's one of my AK Doohickey, uh, AKA, you know, onion monkey. I got a few of it, but I ain't gonna get into that, you know. All right, when you say y'all came from the South, what part of the South? Mississippi. And when did you land in Venice? 1963, after my birthday, I was nine years old. And uh, right after, you know, like King, uh, Kennedy got killed, we moved out here, you know? In an old raggedy car like the Beverly Hill building. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Well, we survived, we made it here. First spot we landed on was 7th and Broadway. That's the first house we got. It was, that was, it was on then, you know, after I got in the neighborhood, like, you know, I had to fight my way in. Like getting jumped in, like, you know, because I was a country boy, you know. I was kind of scary, but I, I, I got to got in the city and know the city, you know, and got to, you know, get, get in the hood real tight because you have to fight your way in, you know, to be, you know, be, to be represented. So that's how I got started. What, what, what made your family come to California? What was the story behind that journey? Oh man, it was like hard back there in the country, man, picking cotton, you know. You know, we had five dollars a day with no money, so we had to come out here like to make some money. You know, family, my sister came first, and then uh, we came behind them about a few years later. And where did they land at when they first came to California? Right here in Venice. Venice. Yes, sir. What did they know about Venice coming from Mississippi? I what, don't what? know, but we—that's where we came. My brother came out here first. My brother-in-law, and they start working for the city. Then later on in years, I start working for the city. You know, I, I better my better myself equality. You know, try to you know better myself. When you, when you first came to Venice, what did you notice as far as the difference between Venice and Mississippi? Palm trees. <laughs> it was I like I had a dream like, you know, like before I got out here, they said they got palm trees, and I got out here and seen the palm trees. Oh, oh this is heaven, man. 
we're looking at them fields out there, you know what I'm saying? Out there in the country, in them fields, you know? So I better, we better ourselves, you know, came out here. And how old were you when you came to Vegas? Nine years old. I just had turned nine. And what was the racial makeup of Venice? Oh, it was racial, at that time. man. Oh man, white boys clans and stuff. That's when the Black Panther came in the hood, and we, you know, the Ku Klux Klan come marching down the street. Black Panther came, so I, I, I marched with them and came a Junior Panther. You know what I'm saying? Start wearing leather coats, Stacey Adams and, and Levi's, and golf caps. I represented the Black Panther then, but you know, I was always known as a Crip because I was, you know, here with the hood. You know. Before the Crip and so we had Black Panther. Yes, sir. Because Venice. it was too much racism in the 60s, man. We had to fight white boys after school. We had to knock white boys out by calling us niggas. But they weren't here in our community, though. You know? Like that. And, and what, what school was that? It was Venice High. Yep. Yeah, man. What, what, what is the schools you guys attend out here in Venice from elementary school up? What? My first school was uh, Westminster. Then I came to Broadway. And yeah. That, that's my two elementary school. Then I went to Mark Twain, and then to Venice. That's junior high. high. Yeah, Twain. junior high. Yeah. So as you as you got into high school, what was the gang scene at Venice? What <laughs> gangs were roaming around Venice at that time? There wasn't nobody. We wouldn't let nobody in here. It was just you know, like well, when we was kids, they used to ride back from L.A. down here, and you know, we was like get on bikes and ride, you know, different L.A. and stuff. But we didn't know it by, you know, the, the clicks thing started off like around like 69, I think, to start, clicks start popping out from 69 on up, you know. First it was just the east east uh, east coast, I mean east side and the west west side. So let me, let me ask you this. What year did Crips land in Venice and who brought it to Venice? I believe it started around like before we got out of high school, what was it, 72, uh, it jumped off? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and, cause and who, it was you know. And who, and who brought it over here? Well, did, everybody what, say my my old boy Troy Ware. No, nah, he ain't. You ain't no Troy. <laughs> Troy wasn't no crib. What was his boy named the Buster partner? J W. J W. J W. Came, came down here and brought this. From one eleven. J W. From one eleven. And they was Crips. And then and you know that was that shit. was our homeboy Buster's cousin. And then so you know we said we gonna be Crips too. Yeah, and at that yeah, same that's time, shit, you know, that's all, yeah, when all the sets was under the UG's nah. car and things of that nature, yeah. you know. And then we, uh, Venice was just still, just straight Venice. And then we turned Crips. We was Venice Crips. First we was Venice Crips. You know what I'm saying? And then Venice that's Ghost Town Crips. Yeah. And yeah, then, you know, so, so come up so, with so, the name. So Shoreline. JD came over here from the west side. And basically, he used to live here. He used to live down here. Mm -hmm. He used to live down here. And he moved over on the west side. And he came down with some of his boys one time. And 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 and, and we was getting along with them. Because we could see what they was. And they told us they was Crips. And we was, we wasn't Crips. We was walking around and calling ourselves eight deuces and shit. And so, so, ghost so. town. Ghost. And then once he told us about Crips, that's what we got. So JD's the original Venice kid that moved to LA yeah. and then came back with the crib. Yeah. I'm in, I'm in JD. But everything we all the logos that we put on our set and for the shoreline, we still was Crips though. We still was saying we was Crips. So you know what so, I mean? So where does Philip McCain fall in in this whole Crip thing in Venice? That's a, they, no, Philip McCain, Philip McCain just came down here. He just came down here and uh, He came to the ham. Came to the ham. He just came yeah. down here we laid. We, we, gave him, we gave him a pass. So Philip came here after you guys were already crippled? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We gave him a pass because his cousin was down. But a whole lot of people didn't like his ass. Why not? You know, Philip was on one. You know, Philip was getting his crip on. You know what I mean? Philip was about like all kind of, Troy. you know, doing his thing, doing what he do. You know, I ain't going to state all the things he was doing. But he and I, we was real tight. You know, so he, we gravitated with each other together, like, like my homeboy Bird said. A lot of people didn't like him, but the fact that I matter, was one of them. right? <laughs> but he, he was, he was him. down. You know what I'm saying? And I used to go in LA with him all the time. You know what I'm saying? So, and I was seeing what they was doing there, and I mostly come back and brought it here. And like I said, the origin there was the underground core. 
at that particular time on the west side. You know, when Took and Raymond Washington them, well, they would have the meeting at uh, Washington High School. Nah, Sinella Park. Yeah, Sinella Park, but we had to, they had the meeting at Washington High School, like I said. But Buster, and me and my homeboy Buster and them, we all used to go up, up, up to uh, Washington High School when they had the meetings on Saturdays yeah. and things, yeah. and the school was closed. So we jump the fence and go inside the school, inside the building, and this, that, and the other. The east side and west side, Chris was there. You know what I'm saying? And we was there. Venice was at the original Venice was at the original crib meeting and things of that nature. And my homeboy Buster took a, my homeboy Buster took a spray paint can and, and you know and Bonnaroo Venice Crips on the wall back in those days. I had a picture a long time ago. That's somebody called Showdown. He's, we didn't have our names in when he sprayed yeah. it for Venice Well, we were Venice Crips, yeah, though. Yeah. Right. Wasn't sure yeah. 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 But I hear the gushing from this guy up here. Who's this yeah. guy sitting up here? That's O.G. Bird. That's sweet, yeah, Bird. Bird, where's your family originally from? Dallas, Texas. And when did they come to Venice and why? They came to Venice in the 1930s. My grandfather came out here. And he got a, he, he, he met this white man and was a movie star. And he sold him a house on Brooks for five thousand dollars. Hey. And uh, he raised his family over there. So your family's one of the original black families of there. Yes, sir. Yes, yep. Yeah, buddy. So how old were you when you when you came to Venice? I wasn't born. So what year did you land in Venice? In 1955. You State born? for Santa Monica Hospital in Brook. Oh, so you're born and raised in Venice. Born and raised. You ain't no transplant. I ain't no transplant. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a G all the way. <laughs> what, what school did you attend? My first school was Sunset Elementary School. I down with the Westminster. Since they closed down, they closed that down. Too many people don't know about Sunset. Located at 408 Sunset Avenue, the 46-year-old Sunset Elementary School was closed down in June of 1966. That was my first school. I went there to the sixth grade, you know, with the Westminster and graduated. And then I went to Mark Twain and Venice High. What was the racial makeup of Venice when you were growing up? Who lived in Venice? Blacks, blacks and men. Yeah. So look, a lot of people don't know about a neighborhood in Santa Monica called the Pico neighborhood. Yeah, that's people, a lot of people, my people stay in Santa Monica too. Yeah. When my mother got old, she moved to Santa Monica. Her and my father, they lived in Santa Monica. And then they moved back to Benny. So Santa Monica had a black enclave just like Benny. Just like Benny. Yep. Half the people from Venice we moved we yeah. lived in Santa Monica. They yeah. people lived in Santa Monica. Yeah. By the early 20th century, African-American families, many seeking to escape the worst of Jim Crow segregation in the South, has settled in Santa Monica. I heard the blacks in Venice, the blacks in Santa Monica are with a lot of family ties. Yeah, yeah, we got along. That's what I'm saying. And for Culver City, yeah. Mark Vincent Garden Project. Yeah. So let me ask you guys this. Can you give me a roll call of the original Venice Shoreline Crips, the ones that were there when the name popped when you guys started Cripping. Who was on these bleachers? Oh, man. A lot of people don't like to have their names said oh, know, and things of that nature. That's, that's, that's the issue. Okay. You know what I mean? All right. That's the issue. You know what I'm saying? It's 2021, man. Yeah, but you know, I don't have no problem with that, but a lot of other homies do. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, why don't we do it like this? Why don't you do the roll call of the guys you think that are comfortable with it? Well, or, or well, you can't give the roll well, call of the guys that's like half the way, so it doesn't even matter. Well, right this now. homeboy right here, well, I know my homeboy Buster wasn't kid. We was all... Buster, yeah. Gus, yeah. Yeah. Heidi, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Bear, rest in peace. Who else? Monkey Chip, Bear. Monkey uh, Chip, yeah. Larry Byrne. Right. Larry Bear. Spicy Mike. Michael Smith, Leroy uh, Big Vaughn, Vincent Duncan, Big Vaughn was there. Yeah. Big Vaughn what? Hell I, I want to kind of like dive into to the second part of y'all neighborhood, more, more just the garden projects. Mm -hmm. What can you tell me about the, the, the beginning of the Mar Vista Garden projects as far as black guys? Go for it, Bird. I don't know nothing about the project. I just used to go out there. 
I don't know when the back to stop me out. Isn't it six? So, I think it was Come on. six, wasn't it? Well, he was here before me. Like he said, he don't know when the blacks had really came to Culver City. But back when we was coming up in, in school at Venice High and things of that nature, and it was blacks there that moved from Venice, like they from Santa, like like blacks moved to Santa Monica, Santa, uh, that had family in Santa Monica, and the blacks here had family that moved to Culver City, the low income houses that was out there, and then the blacks that was there, you know, they was shorelines because they family they they was little kids when they family moved to Culver City. So they turn shorelines too, you know what I'm saying? Cause they come from here, you know, and we recognized them and accepted them as that, you know what I mean? But that was Culver City gang here, basically Latinos. So Culver City Mexicans had that. That was sold first. up. Yes, yes they did. Not first, cause the blacks you know got there, cause I remember when I was young, I, I used to tell a story. Me. Right. <laughs> you said you didn't know nothing about yeah, exactly. Culver City. I don't know nothing about. Cause I, I didn't get out there, but uh, 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 I remember when I was young. I used to go out because I think I used to play in the, in the swamp, in the swamp. I used to play in the swamp. They had the swamp down the uh, canal. They had to run behind the project. Projects officially get acknowledged as, as, as shorelines. Do you know about what year? Uh, somewhere somewhere in the 80s. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Early 80s, long that, you know, long during that time and things of that nature. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He lived out there once upon a time. Project? Yeah. When y'all was coming up, y'all, the beach was one of y'all favorite spots. As Actually, kids. well, uh, as kids, when I was coming up, that's why I used to go out to the beach. I used to go to the beach a long time ago. Just like this corner. Yeah, we stood on that motherfucking river. Yeah, that's what we came from. We used to go to the beach and and, and chase the trolley cars and have the trolley cars. They said I'm probably carved around along the beach. Like he said, Green Hill was a spot by the, uh, what was the name of that liquor store? That trading was, Post, brother. Yeah, yeah, the Trading Post. Uh, uh, right there was one of our original liquor stores and the Green Hill. <laughs> the Green Hill, where we used to kick it at. Real tough right there. And then we go mob the beach and then down in the pavilion at Venice Beach. You know what I'm saying? When did the graveyard come out? Do you have any history or knowledge of those guys? Gray Yards. Gray Yards was first they, they come out there in the nineties. Right. They 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 when we first started being the shoreline crib, uh Dennis Thurman them, you know, that used to play professional football and all that crew Cowboys. and things of that nature. Dennis Thurman them, they uh I don't know so much about that he was one of the ones. No, but they air but but no, but they air was uh what they call itself, uh, uh, Bayfront. They first called itself Bayfront Crips, cause we were Shoreline Crips. So they tried to name themselves kind of, kind of close after. So they tried to name themselves Bayfront Crips before they was Graveyard Crips, and then it was Graveyard after the fact. Yeah. What's your relationship with these guys? Well, the Venice had family. The my comrades. Yeah. It was bad times. <laughs> there, was, there was a point in time you guys fell out. Yeah. We always fell out. But cause we always took in the ass. But uh <laughs> we stay still our comrades because we got family out there.